Right, this is a battle of the most affordable electronic group sets on the market right now. On my right, the defending champion, SRAM rival ETAP Axis, and on my left, the new kid on the block, Shimano's 105 Di2. Through a series of challenges, shifting speed, braking power and stopping distance, ergonomics, customization, price and weight, we'll find out once and for all which is the best one and which is right for you. So this is how it works, nice and simple. We'll go through each category at a time and give one of the group sets a vote or draw if we can't decide between the two group sets. And at the end of the video, round up all the votes and see which one is a winner. So let's dive in. Right, let's start with looks, which I know is totally subjective. So let me know if you disagree or agree by leaving a comment down below. But for me personally, I think 105 is a better looking group set than Rival. We have no batteries on the derailleurs, so they can be free to be small and compact and better looking. The crank set is better looking on 105 than Rival. And the shifter hoods are smoother and rounder and I think look nicer than Rival. But Rival definitely draws it back with better looking disc brake rotors than the quite cheap and the heavy looking ones from Shimano. But for me, it's a win to Shimano. Now clearly they're both electronic group sets, but which one does electronic better? Well, SRAM is a full wireless group set with the drailers having their own batteries and the shifters having their own batteries as well. So only hydraulic hoses going through the frame and the handlebar. That makes building a bike, if you're buying a group set and building your own bike, much easier. Shimano, meanwhile, is semi-wireless. So the shifters are wireless from the rear derailleur and the front derailleur, which are wired together to the internal frame battery. So this, if you're building a bike, it's a bit more complex than a SRAM setup. But if you're buying a bike complete, then that's less of an issue. One big benefit of the SRAM setup is you can easily remove the battery separately, carry spare batteries on long rides, and take them in the house to charge up. Whereas with a Shimano bike, the charge port's on the rear derailleur here, and you have to take the whole bike into the house or near a power source to charge it up, or use a battery bank to charge it in the garage if you're away from power. So for me, I think it's a win for SRAM on account of the ease of charging batteries and changing them as you need. Now, shifting performance, and this is a really tough one. Out on the road, they both shift very quickly, quietly, but try and find out which is better and which is faster, I put each bike in a work stand to try and find out. So by pressing and holding the shift button, I let the rear mech shift all the way from the big to the small sprocket and then back up again. Each group set was in a default shifting mode by the way. And the comparison clearly shows the SRAM group set shifting faster with more speed than Shimano, which is a result, I'm honest, I really wasn't expecting. Another win to SRAM. But what about ergonomics? Actually pressing the gear lever buttons, which is better here? Well, Shimano, as you know, employs a system of two paddles on each side. The left side for the front mech and the right side for the rear mech. Most people know and love this system. SRAM though is quite different, with one paddle on each side of the brake lever. The left for going up the cassette, the right for going down the cassette, and both together for the front mech. Now for me personally, I find SRAM more intuitive less chance of mixing up the buttons as there is with Shimano, and I find it works really well in all situations. It's also a fact that SRAM lets you add wireless blips to optional shifter buttons anywhere on the handlebar, which you can't do with 105. So for me, taking all that into account is a win for SRAM, but I know many of you watching will disagree with that result. What about ergonomics? Because after all, we do spend a lot of time with our hands on these hoods. So which are better? Which have a nicer shape? Again, it's subjective, but I do really like the shape of the new Shimano Di2 hoods. And for me, I think they're more successful than the SRAM hoods. They're smaller, rounder, feel nicer in the hands. And for me, I'd rather spend more time on these hoods than these hoods here. When it comes to gearing options, here it becomes really interesting, but I think there's one clear winner. Now with 105, many people talk about it being a people's group set, but if that were true, you'd have a wider range of gearing options, which you don't have. SRAM offers more gearing options 
for me, making a better people's group set. So a new 105 Di2, you have a choice of two crank sets and two cassettes, but you have many, many more options with SRAM rival ETAP access. And more importantly, for me, as a people's group set, much lower gears as well. The smallest setup available on this bike is a 5034 compact chain set and 1136 cassette. Where SRAM offers a much wider range of choices and low gears. You can go as small as a 4330 chain set and a 1036 cassette. And if you're worried that a small chain set on a SRAM rival setup will limit your top speed potential, then think again. With a 4810 on this bike, you can in theory go much faster than a 5011 on this bike. So smaller gears for hills, but a higher top speed potential as well. So for me, it's another win for SRAM. Both group sets are disc brake only, but which one has the best brakes? I devised a simple experiment to find out. So I rode each bike at 20 miles per hour and applied the brakes at the same point in the road and try to stop as quickly and safely as I could. The road surface is dry, but quite rough. And these are the results. We had the SRAM bike on the front, and a Shimano bike on the back here. As you can see, all within a very close range, so not much in it really. But that said, the SRAM bike did drop more quickly than the Shimano bike by about four or five inches. Whilst on the other end, the Shimano bike was the longest stopping bike here by about two inches. So if you want the best brakes, clearly SRAM wins. If you want a power meter on your electronic group set for racing, or taking your training to the next level, then you're flat out of luck with 105. None is offered where it is on Ultegra and Durace above it. But SRAM Rail does offer a power meter and it's very well priced, just £300 for a left side power meter. So clearly it's a win for SRAM. Both group sets allow a wide range of customization through their respective smartphone apps. Each app allows a similar range of customization in terms of what the shifted buttons do, you can reverse them, do lots of other things as well. But SRAM offers another layer of customization. The whole axis universe means you can add a dropper seat post, tire width for tire pressure, wireless blips on the handlebars for extra shifting positions. All that is done through the app in a way that Shimano doesn't allow. So for me, if you want the ultimate customization, SRAM wins this one. When it comes to weight, neither of the group sets is a flyweight. If you're on the lightest group set, you have to go to the top tier level group sets, SRAM Red and Shimano Durace. These are both quite heavy. Just under three kilos for 105 Di2 and just over three kilos for SRAM Rival, making them both quite heavy group sets. Shimano wins the category on account of being a few hundred grams lighter, but really there's nothing to celebrate here other than the fact that modern group sets like this are pretty heavy. Okay, let's talk about money. And each group set here is the company's third tier offering and therefore the most affordable electronic group set. We'll start with SRAM. It's been around for about a year now and this group set here, two by, no power meter, is around £1,300 recommended retail price. You can go cheaper with one by to £1,000 and pay more for a power meter. 105 Di2 on the other hand, brand spanking new, is £1,700 here in the UK. So a lot more money than SRAM rival. So based on that alone, SRAM easily takes a category. But is it as simple as that? You're unlikely buying a group set on its own. You're more likely buying a complete bike. And here it gets a bit more murky. And down to the company and the buying power and the wheels and tires they spec on the bike and what price range they go for. This Oro Venturi is one of the first bikes here in the UK with the new group set. And interestingly, it's 500 pounds cheaper than the same frame, wheels, with a SRAM rival group set. So I think it's fair to say that prices for complete bikes will be very close with the two group sets on, and it's probably too early to call this one based on the fact that 105 isn't yet readily available on bikes like this. But on a group set price alone, SRAM wins the category as well. Right, okay, all the challenges are over and the results are in. And the fact I'm crouched next to this bike probably tells you who the winner is. Yes, that's right. 
SRAM rival ETAP axis takes more categories than the Shimano 105 DI2 group set. So the group set is a clear winner. Well, yes and no. Some of the categories I know are subjective. And if you go through them yourself, you might come out with a different winner to my results here. So let me know down below which you think is the best group set based on the evidence I've given you today and whether there's more subjective reasons to choose 105 over SRAM rival. Let me know down below. Love to hear your thoughts as always. But if you want to see a full review on this SRAM Rival ETAP AXA group set and why it's so good, check out the video up here and don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button down here. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.